I love when you can revive the life of an old sewing machine. Maybe it came from your mom or your grandmother. Today we are going to look at a 1970s sewing machine and we're going to learn the basics of how to thread the machine from the spool pin all the way down to the needle. So let's get started. Okay, so I am using an extra strong and it's actually quite thick black thread so that you can kind of see where it's going on the machine. Right away, I'm going to look at my spool and I wanna make sure that the thread is making a P, if you can see it. There it is there. And it's going to come from the back of the spool. That's where you want it. So these are your spool pins. You're gonna drop it onto a spool pin and you're gonna guide it over to this first thread guide. And mine's just a clip. Some people have little loops that you're gonna to have to wind it through. I go from the bottom and I floss it up to the top. Next, I'm gonna go and draw my thread coming from the back of the machine to the front through this spool threading tube right through there. Next, we're through our thread tube. And sometimes on some of these old machines, there'll be a guide right here, a thread guide. And I know on a singer that I was just working on yesterday, I had to come around the bottom of it and through the front. You really need to pay attention to the thread guides and how your machine needs to be threaded. So just make sure you're paying attention, get your guide out to make sure that you're threading it properly. Now, on this machine, you're gonna either hold the spool of thread tight or just put your finger right here so that your, your thread doesn't go anywhere. Next, we're gonna put our thread through the tension discs. That's what this is. This gives us our tension on these old machines. You can see right here, I have a little bit of a looks like a tongue that's sticking out. You're gonna put it in front of that tongue, not behind it, not too far in front, but just lay it on that tongue and kind of slide it inward. And you're gonna to pull to the left until you can't feel any resistance. And so it should be right up against, right in the middle of those tension discs. Next, you're gonna pull <clears throat> your thread up and you can see there's a little wire here. That wire, it's a spring wire loop. You're gonna pull it up with the string. See how it's moving with my, with my thread? I'm gonna pull it up and around the little lever there so that it catches and comes back down. Let's do that one more time so you can kind of see it up close. Okay, so here's that spring I was telling you about. You can see it's very, very loose. And then there is the bar. See the tip here? This tip here is where I wanna go around. So here we go. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring it up and see how it just rotates around that little spike right there. That's what you want. You want it to come up and around and go back down and catch on this. Some people don't have this little loop wire, but on this one specifically, you have to bring it up and around and catch it. And then it just stays right like that until you bring it up to the top looper. If you don't have this wire, you just want to make sure that it goes in between the tension discs properly. And if it's not, you're going to have a lot of problems. So just make sure that these tension discs, they go right in between. They're two little discs. You can see I've got one right there and I've got one right there and my thread is right in between those two. Okay, so check on that. This is your take up lever thread guide. As you can see, mine is not all the way up at the top and that's what you want. So you're gonna go over here to the right side of your machine and you have a hand wheel. This hand wheel always should be turned towards you. Now watch my take up lever as I turn my wheel towards me. You can see I can manually lift that take up lever 
and it's just a thread guide, another thread guide. And so you're going to take your thread and you're going to bring it up and thread it from the back to the front. This is very important. If you do not have this thread guide threaded, then you're going to have a lot of problems with your sewing. From here, I am going to take it down to another thread guide here. And I'm going to pull it over. Next, on your needle bar here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see the next couple guides. Next, we go down to our needle bar, and that's what this here is. This is this lighter color bar here is our needle bar, and it actually holds the needle, there's our needle, in place. This little screw in the front is the needle clamp screw. You loosen and tighten this to loosen and remove your needle. So when you need to switch up needles, you just get a little tiny screwdriver and you turn this one way, lefty loosey, ready, tidy, and this needle will pop out and you can replace it with a new one and then you tighten it. You can see this tiny little ball bearing in there, this little stopper. Your needle will go all the way up to that stopper and will stop. Now, let's continue with threading. You can see we've gone from this guide here, this needle guide, or this thread guide. We're going to take it from here down to this thread guide right here, this little loop that's kind of coming out. And what I'm going to do is take my thread, kind of hold it, just like you're flossing your teeth, and you're going to try and thread it behind and then give it a pull. There it is. Can you hear that click? So now I know that it's secure and it's in there. From here, what I'm going to do is I am going to take my thread and you can see the ends are just completely ratty. There's this like extra little bit of thread, which is horrible. You want to clean that up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take scissors and I'm going to make a clean cut so that this is nice and easy to thread through. Okay, look at the difference. See how clean that is now? So much easier. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to thread my needle from the front to the back. The hole should be facing the front of the machine. And I'm going to do my best to sometimes if you wet your finger a little bit on the back side, then what happens is it actually will stick to that needle and you can poke it through and it'll come through easier. And so there you have it. Threaded. So you don't want to make, you want to make sure that it's coming from the front. Let me just extend this out a little bit. From the front to the back, if there's any kind of loop here, sometimes it will loop itself around. Let me see if I can do that just as an example. If you get it looped around accidentally, let me see. Ah, oh, there we go. Do you see how it's looped right now? I've got like a little figure eight, or I guess it's not a figure eight, it's just like a loop. You don't want that. You've got to make sure that you unravel it enough, because that won't sew. That will just be a mess. Okay, so now we have our needle threaded, and you notice that my foot, this is called your presser foot. So there's a little bolt right here on the side of mine. If I move you around, you can see on the other side, I have this little arm here. So if I press and pull, actually not press, pull this down, what happens is I can actually release my presser foot. There is a lever on the back side and I'm going to lift it up and I can remove these feet by extending that press or that, um, bar up and then pulling it out. And so that's how I change up my presser feet. Down here you have your feed dogs. These feed dogs actually push the material through. They're like little tracks and they 
um, go in a circular motion and they are what feed your material from the front to the back depending on which way you're going if you're in reverse they go in reverse from uh, back to the front okay now we're going to put our presser foot onto our presser foot shank this here bar is actually what all the attachments for your machine attached to. So all the different types of feet and um, different things, they all get put on this bar. Now this Kenmore is very, very simple to load. I have the presser foot. The presser foot will go into um, around this little nut here, this little screw, and then I'm gonna tighten it up. So let's do that. One thing I didn't tell you about is this lever here. This is the uptake lever for the shank. It raises and lowers your presser foot. And so when you go to put your presser foot on, what's really nice is that this is the low position. You press it till you hit resistance for the high, and then it can go up even higher to put all the different feet on. So I'm just gonna bring my presser foot over. I'm gonna line it up with that nut. And then it's just gonna slide in like that and that's where then I will take my my lock lever and I'm gonna lock it in place so that this this bar this presser foot bar the arm that the presser foots on does not move now what I want to tell you about with this presser foot is that they come in different sizes so what we're talking about when we put our presser foot lever down, we're talking about the size from the middle of this nut, the middle of the screw, to the plate. We're gonna look at this. Sometimes you hear machines called, oh, this is a, a low shank machine, this is a high shank machine. Well, this machine is actually called a super high shank. What's the difference? Well, let's look at a low shank. If you can see the difference, the low shank, you can see is very low. This is my other machine. This is where that screw would sit, way down here. Now, low shank, I believe, is about a half inch from the plate. And if I just put them side by side, you can see the difference where that nut sits on mine. Now, a low shank is a half an inch. A high shank is an inch from the plate. And mine is an inch and a quarter. The Kenmore's are just a little bit different. An inch and a quarter. And so they're called super high shank. You can get adapters to make them high shank or low shank, but they're really hard to find. Um, but if you have a Kenmore, I'd advise you to get some kind of an adapter because these feet, once they're out, they're out of commission right now. So you can't buy them unless you buy them secondhand and they're really hard to find. Now I'm going to take my thread and you can see on my presser foot, there's a little bit of a groove right in the middle. And I'm going to take my upper thread, pull it a little bit, and I'm going to Feed it from the front to the back, making sure that it goes right into that presser foot. Most of the presser foots out there will have a little guide and you need to put it down to the bottom and feed it through the back. And so there is my tail that when I start sewing, I will hold on to to make sure it doesn't go into where my bobbin is. I want to show you a few other little things that would be very helpful when looking at your sewing machine. This right up here is called a presser regulator. And if I am to push down on the bottom section, watch what happens. This bar jumps up. And on that bar, if you can see, let me see if I can get it, it's got numbers. It's got one, two, three, and four on it. That presser regulator actually regulates and let me zoom out it's directly linked to you got it if i push it down it's linked to my presser foot so the more uh, thin your fabric is the lower down you want this pressed because what it's doing is it's pushing down on your fabric so that it can guide it through 
If you've got a big stack of fabric, say for example, you're quilting and you've got three layers that you're pushing through here, you're gonna want this on probably the highest, um, like as high up as it can go, which is actually the lowest number. So it can really lift up this presser foot so that your, your material can go under. Next, I wanna show you this right here. It says feed. Now, sometimes it's not a button like this. Sometimes it's something else, but feed means your feed dogs. And I'm going to lift this up right here. Ooh, that's really. So there it is. You can see underneath here are your feed dogs. These little, I call them like tracks because that's really what they are. Now, when I push this feed button down, watch what happens. Do you see what just happened there? My feed dogs went down. And so what happens when you're doing any kind of fancy, um, I don't know, using your machine for certain purposes, like for example, you wanna do buttons or you want to um, do some free motion quilting on your machine, putting your feed dogs down is a really nice option. Now I'm gonna raise them back up and all I'm doing is just taking the switch and toggling it over. So here we go, I'm gonna show you how they come back up. See that, now they're up and they're engaged. Lastly, I wanted to show this, cause this is probably one of the most important buttons that you will have on your machine. This one here says reverse. And so reverse is exactly what it says. It makes your feed dogs change direction so that you can actually go in reverse and you can tack the last little bit of your material off to make a knot. Or if you just wanna go in the opposite direction because you missed something. So I push this toggle down, push it up. Some people have a push button, um, but look for your reverse on your machine. So now that we have our upper thread all put in place and it's ready to go, you can start sewing once you put your bobbin in. Thanks for joining me.